how do we make this takeout work? Like, aside from pizza and sushi, yeah. no one's really done it yet. Exactly. So yeah. how do we really get people to want to believe they can get good fried chicken at home? When someone mentions comfort food, first thing that comes to mind is fried chicken. It's juicy, it's tender, it is hot and delicious. Today I'll be bringing you to Juke Fried Chicken, where we get to see how Justin and Brian took fried chicken to the next level with their trademarked, non-GMO, gluten-free fried chicken recipe coupled with a unique cocktail experience. Let's go behind the scenes to check out their secret sauce. Juke Fried Chicken is located just outside of downtown Vancouver, in an area known as Chinatown, known for its specialty restaurants and eccentric flavors. They open from 11am to 10pm and their main clientele are those wanting some quality comfort food on the go. Thanks for having me Justin, really uh, appreciate this. Down. I've heard so much great things about juke. I love juke. I love the batter. I love the crispiness and I love the fact that it's healthy. Tell me more about the concept behind juke. Uh, so the concept came about when I was working in a finer dining establishment. Um, my business partner at the time was one of the head chefs in another finer dining establishment. And I kind of had this idea to do really high quality food like that, but in a really casual environment that I could wear whatever I want. The chef didn't have to be in chef whites and a hat and uh, we could just really build the house we wanted people to come have fun in. Uh, so I had this idea for fried chicken, dining room, cocktail bar, and takeout, um, but I couldn't really figure out how to make that work yet because I hadn't really seen it been done. So then I went traveling, gathered a few ideas, and we came up with this with a lot of people's help. But gluten-free. Yeah, that's, gluten -free. that's the part that I'm mixed up. I'm like, it doesn't yeah. taste like gluten free. Usually <laughs> it tastes kind of like. So, we had a different. few recipes we were trying some old grandmother's recipes, friends' recipes. Um, and as we were taste testing, which was a lot of fun, um, we kept finding that the more we took the gluten out, the better it tasted and the better it held. And like reheated the next day, and we just found it more delicious. And then that, I think that kind of struck a chord with Vancouver being a bit of a healthier city. like. We didn't know, we weren't expecting it, but gluten-free fried chicken kind of took off. Just took off. Yeah. And you're like way ahead of the curve. You focus on delivery even focus before delivery. COVID, so you're well positioned to really capitalize on that. Yeah, when we were building out, I was already planning our own delivery service. Mm. So we partnered with these guys really early. I think we were one of the first restaurants on their platforms. Um, and we all worked really hard together to kind of get their systems working with our systems. Right. And it's, you know, since then it's worked really well. Other people are adapting to that model and that's been our model since we've opened. Do we get to see behind the scenes today? You do get to see behind let's the scenes. Go, let's yeah, go, let's go take it a out. walk through the kitchen. Very right, awesome. Now when it comes to the menu, Juke definitely stands out as the master of fried chicken, offering restaurant quality gluten-free fried chicken with fast food convenience. But what truly makes Juke unique is when you step inside the chickadee room, that's when you can experience their extensive cocktail selection, as well as indulge in more of your favorite comfort food. So, this is our kitchen, a little takeout area right here, and we're crossing into the kitchen where the team works super hard to make this right. Uh, so Juke, as you've mentioned, we do gluten-free fried chicken. Uh, what makes ours a little bit different than everybody else is our fried chicken is brined for 24 hours. Brined yeah. for 24 hours? Brined for 24 hours. So what we does it look like? Just over here is what it looks like. Oh. What's the technique behind yeah. griming? I always hear about it. Well, that's the secret. That's <laughs> Basically, there's different ways to do it. You can pickle brine, you can buttermilk brine. We choose to do buttermilk with herbs and spices. Sits overnight for 24 hours. Right. And we What's roll the purpose it. of that? Uh, tenderizes the chicken a bit, mm. fuses it with a little more flavor, uh, makes it nice and juicy for when you deep fry it and like holds in all that flavor. So what we do is we brine it, yeah. and then we roll it in our custom dredge, which is our gluten-free base. Oh. Comes looking like this, and then we go to a special machine where we call this the bird cage. Close the bird cage, turn around over here, drop the birds in this, 50 pieces for 25 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes, sorry. <laughs> Told you, he's gonna correct me. Uh, 50 pieces for 15 minutes, yeah. and then it comes out golden and crisp. So what's so special about this machine? Is it like a, huh. no, tell there's, me more. There's not many of them, first off. I haven't um, seen this before. 
but it's instead of an open deep fryer, yeah. this is a pressure fryer. So you put it in, you seal it, and then basically the temperature and all your oils heat to one consistent um, level. Like Whereas convection this, oil. Kind of, right? yeah. yeah. This keeps it consistent. So all of the pieces of chicken from the top to the bottom cook at the same rate, wow. the same temperature. This will be your most expensive piece. Do you care, care to share? Uh, I think this one was about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Wow! So, and how many do you guys serve a day? Like these guys, like just crank them out. So we do fifty pieces every fifteen minutes, um, and they usually sell about every twenty minutes. So by the time they're done resting, yeah. we sell them uh, nonstop the whole day. Especially at night, with uh, you know, we work with three different delivery services. We have our takeout, then our chickadee room is our bar and cocktail lounge that we have as well. So it's always moving. It's always rotating. It's never sitting long. Um, yeah, it's just. Can, can, can we see the chicken? You definitely can see some chicken. I'm gonna bring over our chef Clay. Cool. He's gonna make uh, probably our most popular item, which is our jukebox. Let's do that. Because we do fried chicken and ribs, jukebox is two pieces of chicken three ribs, and a side of your choice. We choose to do our peanut slaw, which is always like a favorite. My business partner and chef, Brian, uh, I think I call him the king of sauces. He makes- The king of sauces. The best sauces in the world on anything I've tried. Uh, so we have like four different hot sauces. We do our barbecue sauce. Everything made in-house. Everything made in-house. My business partner works really hard. I'm fortunate, I've got two kids at home, so he, uh, I do everything I can to take what I can off his hands. Yeah, But yeah. being the chef, being the guy coming up with all the new menu items, uh, he works super hard on what he does. And he's got a great team that executes it. That's awesome. I, I love the fact that you're, you're giving him so much credit. And of course, like it's, it's definitely necessary to pay it's a team, credit right? where it's due. It's a team. He helps me where I can, I help him. But uh, especially over the last few months, he's been here a lot more than I have. Nice, yeah. beautiful. Let's go for a chat. Yeah, let's go for a chat. Nice. Go for an eat. Go for an eat. Beautiful. Now, because they mainly deal with fried foods and require specialty kitchen equipment, the total investment for Juke is definitely on the higher end. But on the bright side, the labor cost is substantially lower than typical restaurants since they focus mainly on takeout and delivery. All in all, Juke stands out as a very unique concept and it's truly inspiring how Justin and his team has brought such a crazy idea to life. Oh, this looks delicious. Enjoy. We'll, we'll send Cannot you guys wait. off with a bunch of food. For Beautiful. You. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers ah, to cheers. that. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming down. So tell me more about this whole concept. You told me you went to London with your wife. You're like this idea. Fried chicken and bar don't really mix. I didn't think it would mix, yeah. but it works here. I was in New York. Uh, actually, the weekend I was going to propose to my wife. Um, Four years ago? Five? We, no, we've been married for eight, so proposed nine years ago. Yes. Uh, so I had the concept for a long time before we actually made it happen. And we went to this place, it wasn't a fried chicken place, but they had fried chicken on the menu. And I was like, hmm, I could do something like this, but we could like really flesh it out and make it ours. And that's like the food I love to eat. Yeah. Um, so I had that idea to do like a fried chicken restaurant. But I was like, in Vancouver, my biggest concern, I always said, was a rainy Tuesday in February where you might have like donuts, like no one coming in the door. Yeah. So I was like, how do you combat that? How do you get revenue coming in while still trying to take care of people that may not want to come in? Mm -hmm. uh, so then I started to think about takeout. So I was like, how can you do, and being a bartender is my background, yeah. I was like, how do you open a really great cocktail bar but offer takeout that works well and doesn't just look like it's an afterthought? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know how to do that. Uh, so the next trip we went on, we were in London, uh, just walking around on a rainy day. And we walked into an Indian restaurant and it was really authentic Indian when you walked right. in. Uh, but as we kind of turned the corner, it was like all these bright, vibrant colors, like all the street food. And it was basically just a takeout area. And something clicked and I was like, that's how we can make juke work. Like you, you give, full attention to that takeout area. Like you right. make it so it, it's a huge part of your restaurant, not yes. an afterthought. So, you know, the big thing is restaurants is seats. Like they generate you revenue. So I was like, how do I give up 30 to 40% of my restaurant? Exactly, yeah. Uh, and lose that seating. So we knew we had to make sure takeout was done right. Uh, my business partner, Brian Satterford, he and I had worked on and off since we were kids, like since we were like 19. Um, so my wife always said, if, if we're going to do this restaurant, yes. you're only doing it with Brian. Right. And I was yeah. like, 
That's that's a hard sell. Like Brian at the time was the head sous chef at Hawksworth, which is one of Vancouver's wow, finest yes. dining yeah. places. I was running a restaurant called Shambar, and we'd just gone from Beautiful. our old restaurant, a Shambar, and I was integral in like the new development of their two-story, like 350-seat yeah. place. So convincing Brian to leave a super high-end yeah. establishment and come to a little fried chicken place, I didn't think it was going to be easy. Mm. Uh, but he was really happy to do it. And so we dove in. That's so cool. Yeah. Usually the, the, the most the most wisest idea ever comes from you traveling, yep. being inspired. And that's why like, it's so cool to be able to have you bring that concept that, ha that worked in New York, that worked in London, and morphed it in something that works within the local community. Yeah. I think that's the most important part. And, and obviously, with you have to give credit to your wife. Right? I do. I, exactly. I give all the credit for everything exactly. to my wife. Cheers to that. Uh, <laughs> I, that's something that you I, know how it is. I, I, totally. And it's something that I want to make sure that you know, um, we definitely do is because that's usually the case. Like they're the ones that inspires you the most. Yep. And and you guys talk about random ideas and, and I don't give enough credit to my wife and which is why I'm like, I want to get some brownie points right now. Hey, give her credits it. for everything that I do. For the wives. For the wives, <laughs> exactly. Um, she was, no, she was fully supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, she knew I wanted to do this, but she's like, you need to know how to do it. Um, totally. And so for me, like I'm born and raised in Toronto and in Toronto they have a lot of lounges, which mm. means it's not a club, it's not a restaurant. You can just go out, have yeah. a drink and listen to great music. And I know you can't do that in Vancouver. Yeah. So I was like, how do we make that feeling here? So we just kind of made this room, uh, based everything on textures, kind of, you know, chicken feet along the wall, yeah. like <laughs> almost like chicken skins on the banquettes, like yeah. everything was textured. Uh, and part of the reason for everything being textured was it gives a great look, but it also works in reflecting sound when you're oh. really working with music. And mm. music was a huge part of why I wanted to call it Juke. Yeah. Gotcha, Jukebox. Yeah, Juke Joint, Jukebox. There you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, at the time I was, as I said, opening that other restaurant, yeah. uh, which took a lot out of me. And Brian had just left Hawksworth and he was opening some restaurants for a friend. And while Brian was researching chicken, um, our good friend Cord was like, hey, what are you doing? He's like, you researching chicken? He's like, I want to open a chicken restaurant after we do this. And so we all got on a call and I was nice. like, Cord used to own a place called Meat and Bread. He was one of the founders. So I was like, let's bring him in. Uh, so then we all got together and started looking for places. You know, sorry, sorry to disturb you right there. Yeah. It's crazy you're so casually bringing <laughs> these names and for our viewers that don't know what these places are, yep. these are like the one of like the top restaurants in Vancouver. Yes. And you're just so casually, yeah, you know me and Brad, oh, you know Hawksworth, uh, you know Chambar. Yeah. These guys are like the top restaurants and you guys are like the great minds are coming together, the masterminds, to get I, this place. So you open doors and you're like, what's the marketing? Did you have to do a lot of marketing to get people through the doors? So I think we're, f the three of us were fortunate um, being from those restaurants that you mentioned that people kind of knew of us right. or were excited to see what these three guys from these three places yeah. would be doing. Right. And at that time though, delivery, third-party deliveries still hadn't come to town yet. Mm -hmm. So they were about a month away. Um, so we really looked into how do we make this takeout work? Like aside from pizza and sushi, yeah. no one's really done it yet. Exactly. So yeah. how do we really get people to want to believe they can get good fried chicken at home? Yeah. Um, so then the goal was just get that green box in everybody's house. Get it, as anyone leaving here, send them off with chicken. Even if they don't pay for it, just send them home with chicken, get that green box in their fridge. Yeah. Um, and so the more we got that green box in people's fridge, I think they really understood what we were trying to do. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, Instagram, had been going for a few years, but it, it wasn't really a restaurant marketing thing at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we hopped on that wave pretty early. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that really started. And the thing with Instagram or any restaurant, like word of mouth is your best business. Right, right. But when people are promoting you on Instagram, like, hey, I just dined here, you should try this place out. Yeah. And we can repost that. It was just like really good relationships were formed. Like right. we had people here every day for our first month. Like right. every day, and I was like, that might not be the healthiest thing for you, but <laughs> even though it's gluten free, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it, was, it took some time, but you know, we made it. Awesome. So big plans, big plans Great. for Chickadee Jukes. Yeah. So when I was writing the business plan, the goal was to do a Juke every two years in any different capacity. It might just be a little takeout window, right. it might be a food truck, but the goal is to always be doing that. 
Um, I think Brian and I have also learned we have a lot of different concepts we wanted to do. So we opened a plant-based restaurant called right. Beatbox, Beatbox right. also music related, right? Nice. But uh, so then we've got our theme of keeping things music related, yes. but we can play in any avenue. And Brian's such a good chef, like he can make any food. Right. Um, and it keeps him engaged. And, you know, every time you do a new restaurant, it's just like thrilling for your first 12 months. Yes, so, yes, yes. But it all depends what we want to do and where yeah. we want to go. But we also know, um, you know, the pandemic's hard. It's going to hit people hard. Unfortunately, not everyone's going to survive it. Yeah. But uh, we're fortunate to be doing what we're doing. We're fortunate to have the staff we have. And if we're lucky to move into another restaurant after, even better. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for Cheers. sharing all these secret sauces with Thank us. Thank you for your time. So there you go, guys. The secret sauce behind Juke Fried Chicken's massive success. Justin and Brian's philosophy is simple. Relationship, relationship, relationship. Whether it be relationship with your vendors, relationship with your partners, relationship with your staff. Those are the things that would make you truly successful. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Secret Sauce. I'll see you guys next time.